Shalom. Before I get started with this lesson, I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Wakar Kadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders, a great millstone that taught me this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect that's out here laboring, and all truth and sincerity to you. I say Shalom. This is your brother Amoran from the GMS Charlotte camp, coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Wakar Kadash. And pretty much in this lesson, I want to go into the fact of how this world is meant to destroy, to, to distract, and to destroy you, okay? Because everything in this world is set up to pretty much, you know, uh, uh, keep you from returning back to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, because we understand since being awoken in the spirit, you know, from that spiritual slumber that we were once in, all right, that we understand that this is Satan's world, all right? And Satan has everything in this world, you know, pretty much set up to pretty much keep your mind distracted, man. And, you know, the ultimate point of why everything is like it is because it's ultimately set to destroy you, all right? So let me start here in the book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. Right. The Lord told us to arise ye and depart. All right. It says, for this is not our rest. Not meaning physically trying to flee. All right. This is meaning to come out of the monastery of, you know, Babylon the Great. All right. Because this place, America, all right, which is the main port, a uh, 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 part of the world, where the Israelites will be at, and uh, you know, according to prophecy, all right, for that great deliverance that's going to take place when your house shall returns. But this place, America, was not meant to be your rest here, man. Meaning that we were not put here to be made comfortable, all right, because this place is polluted, all right. It says it shall destroy you even with a sword destruction. And why is this place polluted? Because they all. Stands back to some for, uh, some form of wickedness, some form of uh, idolatry, and ultimately, man, it, it's all a distraction to keep your mind from coming back unto the truth. All right, all the cares of this world, man. All right, the the a hey, the you see on the screen, man. Okay, the sports, the women, the music. All right, drugs. All right, black culture in a nutshell. All right. And the list goes on and on, man. Everything in this world that is propped up and pushed to you is a form of distraction. Entertainment. That's what the that's what the word entertainment means is to distract. All right. So it's all to me. It's all meant to distract you, man. This is why social media all right, it is one of the main tools that has the mind of these people. All right. And look how it has destroyed the minds of the world. All right. Everybody has become a mindless zombie glued to their phone, looking at all types of folly here in America. All right. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, whatever, man. These have the minds of the people. And, and like I said, it, it has destroyed the minds of the of the not only the youth, but also these adults as well, man. OK. It says it shall destroy you even with a sword destruction. And this is what we are witnessing, man. OK. These Israelites that are comfortable here in America, all right, they're ultimately going to be set up for that destruction that's going to await them if they don't repent. Because this place has made our people extremely foolish, all right, and, and their minds are further and further away from the Lord, man, all right, to the point to where the Lord is actively telling you how he wants to be worshiping. He's begging you to come back. Or compelling you to come back unto him, and our people are are you know pushing away the shoulder, man. Okay, not knowing that this is Satan's world, man. And here's the proof of this, man. This is the book of Matthew, chapter four, verse eight. It says again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain, and this is going into the account of when you know Yahweh was fasting for forty days and forty nights in the in the wilderness, and Satan came to tempt him. All right. So reading it again, Matthew 4 and 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world 
and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Right. Because this is his kingdom. All right. So if Yahweh was tempted by Satan, all right, how much more, you know, us, all right, the Lord's, you know, uh, uh, hopeful disciples, man, all right, how much more just the regular people are being tempted by Satan at every chance, man, all right, because we understand that, hey, this, this whole thing that, uh, you know, this whole walk that we're, that we're taking with this, uh, with this knowledge, wisdom, understanding that we have been given, it's all a test, and Satan is being the main one used to uh, to pretty much, you know, see are we applying the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we have been given from the Heavenly Father, all right? Quick precept. This is the book of, matter of fact, before I even get that, let me get this one. So I can bear with me. This is the book of, yeah, 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, right? And Satan Satan will come to you in many forms, man, all right? Because this world is his playground, and he has many, uh, he has many options to test you in, man. And ultimately, his whole destination is to try to get you up out of the truth, man, all right? Like he told Peter, man. Okay, let me get that real quick. Because Satan is looking to he, to see who he can devour by using these different avenues of this world, man. All right? Hey, playing on your, uh, you know, on your vanity. All right? People wanting, you know, a, a vainglory. All right? People wanting fame. People wanting money. Wanting women. You know, whatever it is, Satan will, will tempt you with it. To try to pull you away from your how about Shem Yahweh Shah. All right. This is Luke 22 and 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Right. And so Satan's whole purpose on this planet. All right. Is to try to sift you, you know, away from your how about Shem Yahweh Shah, man. All right. So these different avenues of this life. All right. Will be used. As a as a pretty much, you know, a way for him to pretty much, you know, make your walk to where you will give up this truth and, you know, bow to him. All right. So let's go into this word uh, sift. All right. This is G4617. Sanazio, I believe that's how you say it. It says the word uh, Sanazio, it says definition two. Figuratively, it says by inward agitation to try one's faith to the verge of overthrow. Right. So he's going to put you through a series of temptations to try to aggravate your faith and get you to fall out the truth, man. Because ultimately, man, this is just like the the uh, the story of Job. All right. When the most high and Satan, you know, had that bet against each other to see if if Satan can make Job curse the most high to his face, man. And we're no different. All right. We are in that same lot as Job being tried by the by the uh spiritual demon Satan. All right, to see if we can hold our integrity to your how about Shim Shah, man. Okay. This is the book of Job, chapter two, verse one. Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Yahweh. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. So this is just showing you that this was a, a, a pretty much a meeting of the angels. And Satan, he came also because Satan is the angel of the Lord on the left hand side, man. So he was pretty much checking in with the Lord, showing you that he's in order under the Lord, man. All right. He's in subjection. OK. And the Lord and the Lord said unto Satan, from whence cometh thou? And Satan answered Yahweh and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth the most high and the shoe of evil. And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. 
And Satan answered Yahweh and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But for, put forth his hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to, the, to thy face. And this is what Satan was trying to tell the Most High. That if you allow me to buffet at him, man, all right, I can get him to curse, you know, you to his, to your face. And ultimately, when you read the whole, you know, book of Job, man, all right, Satan plagued Job with all type of t uh, uh, trials and temptations, man. All right. He, he pretty much, you know, uh, took everything from him, man. All right. You know, had his family uh, pretty much all, you know, killed or his children, you know, had his wife come against him. All right. Smote him with boils. You know, he, he had great riches. He lost his riches. He lost uh, all his substance. So he got he got a uh, plague, man. And this is the, the type of mentality that we have to take on, like how Job took on, man. Because even amongst all that hell that Job caught, he never once cursed the Most High, man. All right. He kept his integrity until the end. And then what was hap what happened to him, man? The Most High blessed him with a hundredfold, man. All right. Of what he lost, man. And that's going to be the same trial of the elect. Lord willing, all of us that are, are laboring, you know, that we continue on until the end, man. The Lord is going to uh, he's going to reward us for all that we're willing to put on the line, man. All right. Because as I said, man, everything in this world is pretty much used as a temptation to make you pretty much, you know, distracted and then ultimately to destroy you. Because the things in this world, man, as I mentioned earlier, all right, the vainglory, all right, people want notoriety, man, all right? People want to make a name for themselves here, whether that comes through, you know, substance such as money or, like I said, you know, fame, whether it's, you know, if you're on social media, you got viewers and likes, all right? Or if you're just, you know, well-spoken of in the public opinion because whatever it is that you do, all right? If you have money, you have substance, you know, business or, you know, uh, women or whatever it is that this world it has to offer you, man. Satan will use that as a means to distract you and then ultimately use that to destroy you, which is why the Most High told us this, man. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh by Shem Shah, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. Right, because when you go into, back in that uh, Micah 2 and 10, what it means to be polluted, you know, it means to be pretty much, you know, uh, uh, defiled, you know, profane, you know, ultimately, which means that you're not, you're not being holy because when you're holy, and you're consecrated, you're separated, all right? You're, you're held in a higher estate or standard, okay? Then, you know, those that are, that are, your, uh, are your peers, man. Ultimately, which the peers will be the two-thirds compared to the elect, all right? They're not holy or acceptable unto the Most High because they're not making themselves a living sacrifice, all right? Which it says is your reasonable service because this is the least that we owe the Most High and His Son for all the wickedness that we committed and yet... Yahweh sent, sent his son, Yahweh Shah, down here to sacrifice, you know, himself for our sins. Lord willing, will be of the elect, but ultimately for all Israel. Verse 2, Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Right. Because the renewing of your mind is knowing that everything in this world is vanity and that everything that we do ultimately is, is supposed to be given all, you know, praise, honor, and glory unto you. How about Shem Yahweh Shah, man? All right. That's all that matters, man, is, is giving the Lord his due praise and working, you know, so that we can, you know, uh, make our call of election short so that we can, you know, Lord willing, be found acceptable in the eyes of the Lord for salvation, man. All right. Anything else is a distraction. Anything else, it, it it pretty much will get in the way of that, man, okay? Which is why you can't give yourself, you know, over to the cares of this world, man, all right? Which is, let me get this real quick. All right, this is the book of 1 John 2 and 15. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world... The love of the Father is not in him, right? Because you have cares of this world, man, all right? 
And if you have cares in, of this world, then you can't have, you know, cares for the most high because scriptures tell you this, man. All right. Romans 8 and 5. It says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. And what are the things of the flesh, man? The things of this world, the cares of this world, man. All right. So if you're, if you're, you know, concerned with the things of this world, you're after the cares of the flesh, man. All right. And you're going to do the things of the flesh. But if you're after the things of the spirit, then you're going to be in the, It's like if you're after the spirit, then you're going to be doing things of the spirit, man. Verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against the Most High, for it is not subject to the law of the Most High, neither indeed can be. So that then, so then, they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, which is why the Lord told us back in 1 John 2 and 15 to love not the world, man. Because if you are seeking to be in the spirit, all right. Let me say it like this. If you're seeking to please the Lord, then you have to be in the spirit, man. All right. And you're going to be, you know, reaping or sowing spiritual things so that you can, you know, please the heavenly father, man. And how do you please the heavenly father? By doing what he commands you to do, man, which is the work. All right. Which is the, you know, uh, to making your, your, your body a living sacrifice, man. However that may be for your walk, resisting certain temptations, man. All right. Laying aside all the cares of this life, man. All right. Because it's meaningless knowing that this place is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear fire when the Lord comes back and delivers that judgment upon this place, man. All right. So it says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. All right. So you how about Shimei was shy as dealing with this world? Why? Because we read it earlier. This is Satan's world, man. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. And what are the things of the world, man? All right. Let's get that real quick, man. All right. Hopefully I can remember where it's at. This is this is the works of the uh, of the world, man. The works of the flesh. Galatians five and nineteen. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these: adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in, pa in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Now let's read this in the NLT. This is Galatians 5 and 19 in the NLT. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, which is the flesh, all right, going after the world, all right, which is going to please the lust of the flesh. So it says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, which is the flesh, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatries, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. And these are things... You know, that can be applied in, 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 you know, different things the law says not to, you know, uh, not to take part in, man. You know, hey, you worrying about, you know, uh, sleeping with another man's woman. You you doing drugs. All right. You pretty much, you know, being a busybody. All right. Being a murmurer, you know, talking shit about brothers or you conspiring against each other, you know, being disobedient, you know, pretty much. Whether you in the circumcision or you in the world, man, all right, both both apply because you're not being in the spirit of the Lord if you're if you're uh emulating certain actions that is being listed in these verses I just read, man. Okay, it says, "Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living 
that sort of life shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh because you are concerned with the cares of this world. And the cares of this world will have you, you know, taking on traits that I just read, man. Okay? So, let me go back to 1 John. All right, 1 John 2 and 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. All right? So you can't please the Most High if you're concerned with the lust of this world, man. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai abideth forever. Because those are going to be the ones that's going to inherit the kingdom of heaven, man. Because you are walking in the spirit, therefore pleasing the Lord by doing the things that the Lord delights in, man. You know? Which is, you know, uh, pretty much, you know, being in the spirit, man. All right? And so, let me go back. Because this, this is how you know when you're in the spirit, man. The, your fruits are going to show forth. So like you, yeah, wrong scripture. Let's go back. Uh, Galatians five and twenty two. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against there is no law, and they that are Hamashiachs have crucified the flesh. With these affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit, because the scriptures detail you on how the, how wisdom it teaches you discipline, man. And so when you are applying wisdom, you'll be able to to pretty much you know mortify your flesh by applying discipline. Therefore, you know a certain lust that you are you know you are battling or whatever, man. It it will help. Be subdued because you're applying the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai has given us, and you're not giving, you know, Satan no room to pretty much, you know, uh, uh come into you, man. All right, now, saying now, I'm not saying that that's you're never going to, you know, be visited by Satan, but still, you have a a better chance of conquering those temptations, which is ultimately, you know, the whole point of this walk, man. All right, is to try to, you know, get over temptation, man. Because this world is going to put different things in front of you to try to get you to, to pretty much fall out, man. All right. This is the book of Mark, chapter four, verse three. It says, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on the stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprang up. Because it had no depth of earth, but when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And another fell on good ground, and it did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto him, He that have ears to hear, let him hear. All right, it's going to break down the parable I just read, okay? It says, verse 10, And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked him of the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables. Right, so the Spirit of the Lord has to be dwelling on you for you to, uh, to understand the mysteries of of the kingdom of heaven, which is only given unto the elect, man. Okay? The true mysteries, man. Okay? Verse 12, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Verse 13, and he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then ye know all parables? The sower sowed the word, and the sower being Yahweh Shah. All right. It says, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they had heard Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word 
that was shown that was sown in their heart, right? That's the ones that hear the hear the uh, the truth, all right. But then you know it, it, Satan will come and pretty much you know start you know taking the truth from them, man. They'll be distracted and eventually you know the the truth will be taken, man. They'll go back in the world, okay? It says Satan come uh, verse fifteen and they. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. When they have heard, Satan come immediately and take away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So they, hey, that's, that's a lot of you guys that, that I hear the truth and, and, and be, you know, all for it. All right. It says they have no root in themselves and so endure, but for a little time. Afterwards, when a affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended, right? So they'll they'll be, you know, uh, all proud to be an Israelite, you know, all, you know, trying to tell everybody the truth. And the, the minute they, they first, uh, they face any type of persecution or temptation, all right, they'll blame the truth and pretty much, you know, uh, uh, put it down and go back into the world, man. All right. It says. Afterwards. When affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. All right. And this is pretty much the whole basis of the lesson, man. All right. Because the ones that were sown among thorns, let the, the distraction of the world pretty much, you know, distract them and ultimately, you know, uh, destroy them, man, all right? Because they end up going back in the world to be destroyed, all right? It says, in the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100, right? So the ones sown on good ground were the ones that, Hey, they they heard the truth, all right. They got built up and eventually went out and brought in other fruit, man. Okay, so this is why you have to stay focused in the spirit, man, and allow the Lord to utilize you, all right. By by first of all, you know, like I said, making making sure that you are you know disciplining yourself in the spirit, so that you can remain you know holy and acceptable unto the Lord, being you know meat for the Lord's use. And, you know, and you do that by staying focused on the on the prize at hand, man, which is the kingdom of heaven, salvation, man. Yahweh Shah's return. None of this other shit matters, man. You know, hey, this world is going to pass away soon. So anything about this world, man, it, it's going to go away, man. So why concern yourself with the cares of this world, man? All right. This is Luke 11 and 34. The light of the body of the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, Thy whole body also is full of light, but when thy eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness, right? So, hey, you know, the, the light of the body is the eye, man. So, ultimately, man, you have to keep your eye single, and, and keeping your eye single means you got to be focused. And you you have one goal at hand, which that goal on hand is salvation, man, the kingdom of heaven, okay? And you'll be full of light, man. You'll be full with the, with the heavenly spirit, man, the Holy Spirit. To pretty much guide you to that goal at hand, man. But if you let the, the, the cares of this world pretty much, you know, blind that light, this, then your body will become full of darkness and you'll be pretty much thrust back into that darkness, which is the world, man. All right. So we got to stay focused, man. And don't let this world pretty much pull us away from your how about Shimei Shah because we know that if we go back into the world, all right, that is the death sentence, man. That's going to be the destruction of us, man. All right. So this is pretty much like a slight exhortation through the Spirit. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. So I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah Bashem, Kwadash. Double honors to my apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that time in his truth and rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect. Until next time, I say Shalom.